Hey guys, welcome back. So it's been so long since I did a story time and then this story just presented itself. Don't mind this, this is from a haul that I did yesterday that I'm gonna be uploading to IGTV. Let me move it out of frame. Get you set up, a little crooked. Anyway, so let's get into this cause I don't want this to be a super long video, but this is the story of my first bad review. <laughs> So before I get into it, let me just say, don't let bad reviews have you by the balls, okay? That's what customers thrive on. And I, I, like bad customers, I should say. That's what they thrive on, are on businesses that are so worried about reviews that they will bend over backwards for them. So a lot of customers will try to use your reviews against you. I think at the end of the day that the things that are going to get you the most customers would be your customer service and your word of mouth. Um, your reviews, I mean, they, they probably contribute, but like for me, for example, I'm still a relatively new business. I'm still like under two years in. I have probably less than 10 reviews total and I'm booked out and not taking new clients. So again, don't let bad reviews have you buy the balls because like I said, these type of people they thrive on it. This is why they leave the bad reviews. It makes them feel special. It makes them feel like they won when they know they lost. Okay, so here we go. Let's get into it. <clears throat> so this all started because, um, oh no, some of this conversation is not here. I thought the whole thing would be on my computer and it's not. Um, Okay, well, I know most of the story without looking at my phone, because <laughs> obviously I'm filming on my phone, but I've got the majority of the text here in front of me. Okay, so this um, all resorted from invoices, which that, the invoices are a whole subject of their own. Um, I don't do invoices for basically anybody anymore. There's like probably less than five people that I still allow to do invoices and that's because they've always paid me on time. Um, everybody else I pretty much given up on invoices with because I just kept not getting paid and I do not like to have to hound people and remind them to pay me. So that is what led to this customer being fired. So it all begins. Um, her Okay, to kind of give some backstory on this client, this is a client that she lives out of town, but her mom lives here. Her mom is living in assisted living, and so the daughter, I guess, does a lot of her bill pay and stuff like that for her. So, what I was doing was I was going to the assisted living place, grooming the mom's dog, and sending the invoice to the daughter, right? Okay, so she's out of state. Okay, we'll get there. Now, before we even had any issues with the invoices, we did have a lot of issues with her scheduling, last minute cancellations, or sometimes not even last minute. Like there's been, there was a couple times that she would schedule and then two days later text me and be like, no, my mom doesn't want to do that day and whatever. So we finally get her mom to where she's on a regular schedule and all of a sudden we start having issues with invoices being paid. Now I try to be lenient about it. The first time that one is not paid on time, I really let it slide. Um, I'll just send, what I do is I would send their invoice right away, you know, as soon as I leave. I give them a few hours, typically once I get off like six, seven o'clock, I will send a second reminder if it has not been paid. If I don't hear anything by like eight, nine o'clock, then I'm gonna be texting you. Hey looking for my money. You know what I'm saying? So, um, and I think that's beyond lenient of me to give that long to pay. You know, this isn't like out of the niceness of my heart that I'm providing these services. These are to pay bills that I have that are due, you know, and I don't get to pay my electricity bill late. So I don't think you get to pay your grooming bill late. Seems fair to me. Um, so anyway, like I said, first time goes, that's how it went. I'm like, Hey, like just wanted to remind you, she ends up paying it a day late and I don't love that because I really like I'm very OCD about all my numbers matching so if my booking app shows that I should have made X amount of dollars that day then I want my square reports to show the same number because that way if I ever get audited it's very cut and dry like here is this day here's how much I made do you see these numbers reflect so anyway I'm very particular about invoices being paid on the same day so like I said first time happens she pays it late. I'm, I reminded her, like I said, the three times the, or I send the invoice, do a reminder, 
or I send an invoice reminder and then I do a text. So I did that the first day. She pays it the second day. I'm like, okay, thank you. I just tried to give her the benefit of the doubt of like, oh, something, she must have a lot going on. She just forgot today, right? So second time comes around. I'm texting her again, do the same process that I just said. Um, I sent her a text even right as I left and I said, hey, I've gotten the dog taken care of and I went ahead and sent the invoice sent the invoice to the same email as last time. And she says, okay, I will send shortly. The next morning, I text her again and I say, hey, just wanted to remind you about the invoice. She said, just paid, sorry for the delay. So this is time number two at this point. So I say, no problem, in the future, please try to keep the payment on the same day as your service. It messes up numbers on my end when invoices are paid on different days. Thank you and I hope you have a great weekend. Really tried to handle it nicely. Like, I don't like to be like school teacher, like where's my money, you know what I mean? Like, it's just like, I really want this to be an enjoyable, non-stressful, thing for everybody like this should be like a fun luxurious thing you know what I'm saying like this isn't I'm not like the debt collector you know what I'm saying like you just gotta pay me whenever I groom your dog seems pretty fair to me like if I go and get my hair done I pay her right then and there I don't pay her a week later no I pay her right then and there before I even walk out of the shop you know what I'm saying so um the invoice to me is like a privilege that like if you're not home or whatever then you can just pay it you know at your convenience but I do expect it paid the same day which I think is beyond fair so anyway so I I say that to her and she says okay we'll do so here we are and this is two consecutive appointments by the way these are like she was doing like three to four week appointments so these are two appointments in a row that she pays me a day late okay so here we are third time right so I say I sent the invoice did the same thing text her I say hey I just wanted to remind you again or remind you about your dog's invoice and she says back to me okay driving thank you which I found maybe it's just me maybe I'm sensitive but I thought that was beyond rude I have gone to your mother's, I have performed a service, and I deserve to get paid for that service when I expect the payment. It's not when you feel like paying it, none of that. No, this is, I provided a service, you need to pay me. And at this point, I'm not taking new clients, and there was also, without getting too nitty gritty, there was also kind of some issues with me having to go to like to the nursing home, and her mom was not, not always in places where I could find her. Um, so it was, it was just a lot. And it was also like a lot of like back and forth. It, it, I would say to just go in and out of the nursing home probably added like an extra 10 to 20 minutes that I would not have to add to a typical client's house. Cause it was just going in, trying to find her, all those things. Right. So, you know, there's kind of a lot on top of not being paid. So it's like, I feel like I'm bending over backwards for her already. And then now I'm not getting paid for it, which is like not really sitting well with me to begin with, and then now you're kind of being rude about it. So she says, okay, driving, thank you. And I'm like, okay, cool. So I'm like, I just decided at this point, I was like, that was rude, I'm not gonna tolerate that. So I'm like, if she does not pay this invoice on time after I have now talked to her about it three times, then that's it, I'm letting her go. I'm literally not dealing with this. You're not gonna not pay me and you're not gonna be rude to me. That's two things I'm really not gonna be putting up with at all so I wait <laughs> this woman pays her invoice at like 12 10 a.m so guess what it was late on my square on my end showed up paid a day late so guess who got fired so I texted her and I said good morning I noticed this is the third time in a row that your dog's payment has been paid a day late I require all my clients to pay for their service the day of their appointment. Since we cannot seem to get on the same page about my expectations, I'm going to have to let your dog go as a client. Thank you for your business and I wish you the best of luck in finding a better fit for your dog. So she texts me back and she says, my apologies, out of state, totally different time zone, didn't realize it was an issue. And again, I've talked to her three times about it. She knew it was an issue. That's a a blatant lie and I have the text to prove it so didn't realize it was an issue is there any way we can keep your services I'll just pay I'll have money 
I'll have something pay from now on. This is why I asked if we could put a card on file. Because she did originally, whenever I first started coming to her, she asked me if I could keep a card on file. I don't personally do that. And I'm not... Like, it seems kind of silly to change a whole policy for, like, one person. Like, some people are really not comfortable with putting a card on file. And the only way to allow her to do it would be, like, to change it in my system. And it, anyway, it's just, like, why can't... With the four reminders I sent you, why can't you just fucking pay it? I just... So, she's like, this is why I asked you if I could put a card on file. Is there any late fees? So, the point, our next appointment has been canceled. And... I said, I did communicate at the beginning of taking Missy as a client that I do all invoices the day of payment. And I actually have messages of this too, because she asked me if she could go ahead and pay early originally. And I was like, oh no, I do need to take the payments on the day of the service just to keep my numbers correct. So I said, I did communicate at the beginning of taking her as a client that the invoices are due the same day as the appointment. I reminded you again after the second missed payment. I also sent you two reminders yesterday to try to get it paid on time. I do not offer to keep cards on file and I do not charge late fees because she's asking about late fees. I'm like, honey, you haven't even paid the regular fee. What are you talking about? You're going to pay me extra money? Just pay me what I asked up for. I don't I don't, what are you talking about late fees? Like, I can't even get you to pay the fucking service you've already paid. You, we're not doing that. I could just see it. Like, I'm not paying a late fee. Like, no, just pay what I've asked you to pay. Like, why are you asking? And, and this woman never tipped either. So that's why it's so bizarre to me that she's like, I want to pay more. Like, well, why didn't you? Anyway. So, um, I was like, I keep the same rules for every client to keep things fair across the board. And she said, okay, I don't understand the, or I didn't understand the urgency. I'm sorry. Is there any way we can t continue your services? My mother is very happy with your services and I will make payments on time going forward. Will you accept debit card on site or is everything online? And then, and she's like, by the way, sending these all like back to back to back. I haven't even gotten a chance to like look or respond to any of them. And she's just like, keep, keeps messaging me. So she's messages again, please give me an update on how we can resolve this. I say, I appreciate you trying to rectify the situation, but I'm going to have to stick to my policy and make the decision that is best for my business. I've enjoyed working on your dog, but being paid on time is something I'm not willing to compromise on as it affects my numbers for my business. My numbers and squares should reflect the appointments in my booking system. When invoices are paid late, they're, they no longer reflect, which makes more work for me and for my bookkeeper. I wish you the best of luck for finding a better fit for your dog. She's very sweet. She's a very sweet dog and has been a pleasure to work on. Wishing you all the best. Thank you very much. And... <laughs> Oh my god, hold on. I forgot how long this story went on. I really should have made this video like right when all this first went down. I'm also gonna have to pull up this review real quick so I can read it to you. Okay, so we we that's that's all that happened that one day, right? Um and after we have this conversation, she goes ahead and leaves me a review. So let me find her review. I thought this would be a lot easier. Oh, wait. <laughs> I'm sorry, guys. I should have had this pulled open. My reviews are still great, by the way. Okay, so on Google, she says, I wish I could not give a star. You don't want to use grooming by Janine and spells the entire thing fucking wrong. It's literally dead ass in front of her face. And she's like, grooming by and spells my name wrong. First of all, it's grooms by Janine right there in front of your fucking face. You managed to type it in to find it, but can't. Anyway, so <laughs> um, she's like, if you're a day late sending a payment online three times, she will no longer do services. She would not even accept any other options. I could see if I didn't pay, but my 80-year-old mother is in a wheelchair bound with her dog, and I have, I live out of state. Give me a break. And I said back, which I, honestly, if I could go back, I just wouldn't even respond to her stupid ass, because, like, the only thing I really wanted to say that I should have said was, um, okay, good, so I'm glad that we finally understand, that we are on an understanding that if you don't pay me, then you will get left, let go as a client, because... She didn't understand that before when I kept telling her she needed to pay me. So I'm glad we finally figured that out. So I'm like, I know you're upset about being let go as a client, but as we've already discussed, you have to pay for your service when the time, when the service is provided. Late, late payments are not tolerated. And as we've already discussed on, 
or late payments are not tolerated as we've discussed on three separate occasions. It is unfair to keep you as a client when I have people who are willing to, people who are willing to, oh, I must have messed this up, willing to get on my route. Oh, waiting. Duh, I'm blind. <laughs> I'm reading this from kind of far away. Don't mind me. So I have people waiting to get on my route. I do have all of our conversations saved, including the ones where you expressed how pleased you were with my service. It's sad that you're resorting to giving, giving my business a bad rating when I've done everything in my power to accommodate you and your mother. Your rude demeanor will not be tolerated with me. Thank you so much. And I wish you luck in finding a groomer who fit, better fits your demands. And you'd think, you'd think that was it, right? We've, we've taken care of this. She's left me a review. Done, right? No. <laughs> Wrong. So <laughs> the next morning, this bitch texts me and she says, hello, this is Mrs. Mrs. Hall. M oh, sorry, Mrs. What's her face's son. Now, now it's not, not the lady anymore. I guess I'm talking to, I'm talking to somebody else texting me from her number. My mom has been taken advantage of several times, putting her card out there so much also, against my wishes, she's gotten into cabs just to get the dog's nails done because of lack of ways to vet's offices. This would put my mom in a very bad situation. I'm asking you please to reconsider this. I'm sure you wouldn't want to deal with this. Wouldn't want your 80-year-old mom to deal with this. Okay, so two things before I say my response. First of all, that's a blatant fucking lie. And I can tell you that's a blatant fucking lie because I went to her retirement home every three to four weeks there are buses available available for her there are employees there there are plenty of people there no one at that retirement home is going to let this 80 year old woman get in a cab by herself and just wander off into the city absolutely fucking not so you can just go ahead and save the guilt trip on that one so when you're lying to me because i flat out know this is the same lady i've been talking to oh now it's her husband talking talking to me on the phone okay well and another interesting thing that doesn't add up in their story is when she originally when she texted and booked the first appointment she told me this was her mom now all of a sudden it's her husband's mom is there something i should know about because i live in south carolina not alabama <laughs> so um Mm, a little weird. So either way, um, so I'm, I'm first of all convinced this is her texting me. And like I said, we're in with a guilt trip. Like, oh, she's going to get in a cab. She's going to end up da da da. And then he says, I'm sure you wouldn't want this for your 80 year old mom. First of all, my mom, I would never not pay her dog groomer. First of all, I would make sure that my mom's bills were paid for. So I would actually never end up in this scenario. And again, your mom is not going to end up in an unsafe scenario. That's why she's in a retirement home. They're not going to just let her jump into a fucking yellow cab and be like, bye, wish you luck. That's not going to happen. You're fucking toxic trying to manipulate me. So I sent them the screenshot of the review they just left me. I said, I fired you not only because of late payment, but also for your blatant disrespect. You li literally left me a one-star review 10 minutes before texting me and begging you to take you back as a client. I will absolutely not reconsider. I have way too much respect for myself to allow anyone else, anyone to treat me this way. This conversation is over. Thank you. Have a great weekend. And he says, that was my wife. Yes, she is pissed off, but you are not understanding. Oh, I'm not understanding, you're right. So, I said back, and this ended the conversation, so we're almost done here. I said, the only thing that is being misunderstood is that I am telling you no. I have worked myself to the bone to build the reputation that you and your wife are trying to tarnish because she cannot follow a simple rule that you have to pay for your service the day that your service is provided. As mentioned before, I have way too much respect for myself and my business to tolerate this behavior for anyone from anyone. I have 20 clients on a waiting list who would love to pay me to groom their dog. I have a fantastic reputation in my area as my grooming speaks for itself. I have the right to refuse service and I will no longer be grooming your dog. Thank you. I hope you find a groomer who fits your needs. And I've never heard from him again. So thank God, Jesus Christ, leave me alone. Like I just remember like, cause this was spanning over days, you guys. Like, I just kept thinking like, this is over. Like whenever we were having the conversation, I was like, this is over. Then she left the review and I was like, this is over. And then they text me the next day and I was like, you gotta be out of your fucking mind. You gotta be out of your mind. You're talking to the wrong one. So 
I feel like there were definitely things that I could have handled better. Um, and they're, you know, I, I, but I'm also proud of the way I handled it. I remember at the time, like, I was like, I'm about to blow my lid at these people, but I really did <laughs> hold it in. Um, they did leave me a voicemail and I'm wondering if I can't play it on my computer. I don't know. I don't know if you can play voicemails on your computer because that would be amazing to play you guys the voicemail. But um, I actually never even listened to it because, like I said, I was so aggravated at the time. Like, it was just so beyond disrespectful to me. <laughs> like, I'm like, you're not going to pay me. And then when I'm like, you know what, fine, if you're going to be rude and not pay me, you can go somewhere else. And then you're going to leave me a bad review after I bent over backwards for you. And if you ever, by the way, find yourself bending over backwards for a client, let me just tell you to just go ahead and let them go. Because every time, every time I have tried to bend over backwards for somebody, that is the same client that ends up trying to take advantage or leaves over something petty or whatever. Like, at the end of the day, these are your clients, not your friends. So just remember that. So anyway, um, that's the story of my first bad review. I hope that makes somebody feel better if um, they've gotten a bad review for something stupid. Uh, I'm, I see a lot of the grooming forums. I see bad reviews for like any stupid little thing. Driving too slow, driving too fast, you know, fucking couldn't get me in. My dog was too big. I've seen bad reviews for everything. So if somebody's left you a stupid ass bad review, let them. Who cares? Honestly, like there are way more dogs in the world than there are groomers. So we're going to be fine at the end of the night. So let these crazy people be crazy. It's Christmas season. So in the spirit of Christmas, I just figured we'd talk about bad customers because we know they're coming out of the woodworks right now. <laughs> and we haven't even, it's just now getting into December. So <laughs> God knows. Last Christmas, I got followed home by some random fucking people asking me for a quote at like fucking seven o'clock at night, like pitch ass dark, live it by myself at my house. And they fucking follow me down my driveway. It must be out of their fucking mind. Um, so anyway, yeah, <laughs> Christmas, don't we love it? We do, we do, we love Christmas, but um, <laughs> we don't love crazy customers. So anyway, if you've got a bad review, don't feel bad about it. It's stupid. Like I remember I was so mad for a minute there because I was like, I've worked so hard to build my reputation just for this dumb bitch who just can't even be bothered to pay me to leave me a bad review, like fuck her. But honest to God, like as soon as I really sat back and read her review, I was like, yeah, exactly. So you like reiterated what I was saying was that if you don't fucking pay me, I will fire you, which I think is pretty fucking fair. But maybe maybe I'm crazy. I don't know. But yeah, I'm not charter. I'm not gonna charge you late fees. Like if I can't even get you to pay your regular fee, I really don't believe you're gonna pay me a late fee. So to me, if I add late fees, that's just a good way to not get paid at all. So um, yeah, <laughs> anyway, um, things you can learn from this story is don't do invoices and um fuck a bad review because whatever if, if she weeds out a couple people thank god because that waiting list of 20 people I was talking about is up to over 40 now so and I'm really not looking to take anybody else on hopefully at least maybe not until the end of next year so <laughs> leave me a review bad <laughs> I can't talk really go ahead and leave me a bad review see how much I fucking care so, anyway, I love you guys. I hope you enjoyed this story and it makes you feel better if you've had a bad review because that shit will piss you off when you've been working your ass off and this dumb bitch comes over here with her. Anyway, so I love you guys. I hope you enjoyed this story. I'll see you in the next one. Goodbye.